Welcome one, welcome all, to your number one resource for Hollow Knight guides, tips, and tricks. Or possibly your number two resource. No, 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 don't worry, you're allowed to have tastes. I might even be your third favorite Hollow Knight resource, possibly even your fourth, or your fifth, or your sixth, or... Shit, dude, you might not even heard of me before this video, in which case this entire intro won't even make sense. Green Path holds a special place in my heart. It was the first area I stumbled into after Crossroads, and having been put under the impression that this game was only going to keep me busy for like three hours, the Green Path was my first indication that Hallownest was actually a much bigger kingdom than I thought it was. 13 biomes, 45 bosses, and three years later it's become an obsession that's consumed my life and my career whether I like it or not. And I think this is why Green Path has remained one of my favorite areas in the game. It's where all that sense of wonder and curiosity really kind of started for me. I wasn't sure if I would ever get back around to doing these, but it sounds like I, uh, I kind of owe it to some of you guys to continue it. Also, before I get into this, I'm hosting a full day charity stream tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time right here on this channel. We will be doing a full Steel Soul difficulty playthrough, no deaths, true ending and all, and 100% of all proceeds, donations, and any revenue whatsoever will be handed over to Campaign Zero. Obviously, you are not obligated to donate in any way, but any and all contributions are appreciated and valued. I'd love to see your support, so uh, if you have some time tomorrow, feel free to stop by and bug me for a few minutes. Get it? Because this games about bugs. You know what? I'm, g I'm gonna go on ahead and start the thing. Just go on ahead and start the video. First, before we embark on our little spring cleaning expedition here and thoroughly pick this place spotless, let's go over the essentials of the Green Path. Places, locations, and other resources that you absolutely need to know about as you're heading in. In Green Path, there are a total of six benches. The first bench, despite it being easy to reach, is actually kinda easy to miss if you don't know it's there. Catch the first bench very soon after you enter the biome from the Forgotten Crossroads right here. The second bench is middle ways through the green path and must be activated at the expense of your geo, but it's not really that much so shouldn't be that big of a deal. The third bench is found just below where the player fights Hornet for the first time, next to a stag station that's marked by this little sign right here. And while you're resting, you should definitely go ahead and open that up too. The fourth bench is found subsequently after the fight with Hornet, and after acquiring the dash, you follow the path that's open for you, continue downwards to the left, and walk all the way to the left to reveal a sublocation titled the Lake of Un. Here inside this hut is where you will find the fourth bench and a mysterious NPC named Quirrell, whom we will get to very, very soon. Bench number five will be found heading left from the main entrance to Green Path. Hop down this little hole right here and then directly to the right. Through this cave you'll find a nice cozy little room with a free place to rest and adjust charms if needed. The sixth and final bench is located just beyond a trickier platforming segment involving some practiced use of the long dash ability. If you've acquired this ability from Crystal Peak as well as the Mantis Claw from the village, you should have everything you need to be able to cross this chasm. At the very end is a bench located just outside of a hut that houses one of the game's three Nail Masters, which again, we'll circle back to him in a few minutes. Cornifer can be found by heading downwards immediately after the room with the bench. There's a passageway to the bottom right of this area that will lead you directly to Cornifer if you follow it to its end, and despite showing you the location on the map being counterproductive as all hell if Cornifer is the man you're looking for, I just decided to show it to you anyways because I'm a, I'm a good person, so yeah, there, there you go. Eat your heart out. The green path comprises three main bosses and one dream boss hidden in the stone sanctuary sub-area. 
I'm not going to spend too much time on these guys, but I do have other videos that go a little more in depth on the tactical side of things if you're looking for fighting tips and such. In past videos, the massive moss charger is a boss I've written enough roasts on to burn down the whole goddamn forest, but in all honesty, if you're a new player that has just recently discovered Green Path, then I'm just going to say in your defense, I can see how he can be a little confusing. If you aren't anticipating it, his upwards leap attack gives you just barely enough reaction time to swipe at him once and then move out of the way. And I could talk about how disgustingly easy it is to just pogo on his head, but you're not going to develop that muscle memory upon discovering the second area of Hallow Nest. He's, he's a bush with a face. He has no lore. The lore is he is a bush. Kill it. Whereas Hornet here sits on the exact opposite end of the lore spectrum because she has so much goddamn lore that almost the whole game revolves around either her existence or other bugs that knew of her existence prior to the game's events. Facing and defeating Hornet gives you access to the Dash ability, one of the game's many fundamental movement abilities that are 100% necessary for navigating around Hollow Nest. The third and final real boss, also the area's second optional boss, is the Vengefly King. I know it might be hard to conceal your intimidation after defeating the bug, but bear in mind, you are in fact in the presence of one of Hollow Nest's strongest and most powerful warriors, Zote the Mighty. His nail, Lifeender, has ended over thousands of lives in the kingdom, hence how it got its name if you're you know, wondering. Zote graduated at the top of his class in the Navy SEALs and has over 300 confirmed kills. In fact, he has over thousands, considering my last sentence. I, I'm so good at writing scripts, man, you know? His nail totally isn't made out of plywood or anything like that. Y you know what? Just don't risk a confrontation. He's probably too dangerous. Actually, yeah, go ahead and save him and talk to him because his side quest is actually pretty funny. In addition to the three bosses, Green Path also has an optional dream boss encounter that you can return to once you have the necessary abilities to challenge her, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> The Green Path is inhabited by a tribe of bugs known as the Mosskin Tribe. The Pale King sought out their territory, wanting to build roads and walkways that would intersect their tribe. The Mosskids granted him permission to do this, so long as the Pale King understood that any foreign traveler or merchant that used the roads were subject to the laws of the tribe. Since the establishment of the Mosskins, they have held an unbreakable faith in a creature whom they call Un. Formed from a dream, the Mosskin Faith details that all life and vegetation that grew in the Green Path and in the gardens to the west were all thanks to this dream. In their temples and cathedrals, they preached about this higher being that willed their tribe into existence in hopes that one day Un will summon them and deliver them back into the dream. The Mosskins don't look too advanced or intimidating at first glance, but some of their stonemasonry is surprisingly detailed and pretty impressive. Evidenced by the temple that was built just off the shore of the lake that served as a holy ground for prayer and worship to Un. But as driven to faith as they were, the Mosskins weren't completely defenseless. Some of the more physically abled inhabitants took up the nail and shell, and devoted themselves to Un's faith as fierce and practiced warriors. They would sometimes be found guarding points of interest around the tribe, like geo deposits and whatnot, but primarily, the knights tasked themselves with protecting Un's temples and preserving the faith of their tribe. After the infection took hold of Halonest, however, some of the tribe's followers no longer upheld the faith of Un. Some of them, entranced by the infection, took to worshipping the Radiance. A gathering of mossy vagabonds established a small worshipping ground just below the Moss Chapel in the Western Gardens where they met in secrecy to give praise to their new path of faith, the Radiance. There's also evidence floating around of the Mosskin tribe having control over the gardens to the west at one point, but a Green Path tablet tells of this pale being that soon took over the gardens and claimed it as her own territory, forcing the western half of the tribe into a relocation. <laughs> Thank you.
One of the most important key items you'll need to pick up in the green path absolutely as soon as you're able to will be the hunter's journal received from the hunter NPC. With this journal, you'll be able to record and document info on all the foes you face in Hollow Nest, unlocking information like background story and sometimes even tips on how to dispatch them quickly. The hunter NPC is resting below the main entrance to the area here on the map. It's identified by the bush with the face. I I don't know how else to describe it. It's it's a bush with a face. If you've hit this bush with a face, you've gone way too far, however. The nail art won't be able to be obtained until after you've acquired the long dash ability from Crystal Heart, which you can find in the Crystal Peak area, and this is a pretty integral mobility item that you'll need to pick up, so it's not like you won't be able to return here later. The platforming section requires a lot of trickier crystal dashing, and the hardest part probably being this surprise butt sex thorn clump right here. Charge up a crystal dash and stop it just short of the thorns, and then regular dash below it and down strike on one of the Durandus heads if need be. And if you're asking, yes, that, that is what they're called. Durandas. Don't ask why. I didn't make the game. Don't be quick to head out after obtaining the nail art, however, because you aren't completely done here yet. You still have a rancid egg to collect at the very bottom left of the area, so make sure you get that too on your way out. After fighting Hornet, one of the game's main bosses, you'll receive the Dash Maneuver, which is an incredibly versatile ability that opens up quite a lot of locations in Hollow Nest that you couldn't reach before. The Hornet fight itself isn't too hard, especially if you're mindful of your soul and practicing the right places to heal. I've done more than a few videos of boss tips and rankings and such, so if you're new to Hollow Knight and you like more tips on how to beat Hornet, uh, don't. No, don't watch any of them, actually, because they all have massive spoilers in them, I just realized that. Yeah, just find a wiki page instead. Yeah, fuck it, don't even do that, just figure it out, just, just beat the fucking boss, she isn't hard. Fighting Hornet and getting the dash will allow you access to the area directly to the left. Dash across the hot acid and continue left to find a holy structure built by the Moskin to worship Un. The area gives way to a small pier extending forward into Un's lake, and this becomes another point of interest later on, so make sure to remember that this lake you know, exists. Head inside the temple for a bench and an interaction with one of Hallow Nest's most cryptic warriors, Quirrell. I would definitely recommend engaging with him every time you run into him in the kingdom, because not only is his questline borderline necessary to understand the backstory of everything going on in Hallow Nest, he's also a mighty sparkling conversationalist. Sometimes he even gives you tips and warns you of what to expect in certain areas. He's, uh, he's a helpful dude. This is also one of the first instances in the game where the Lumafly Lantern definitely begins to make things a little easier, so make sure to purchase it from Sly for 1800 Geo prior to going down into the Sanctuary. Grinding the Moss Knights here in this area can help you out if you're short on cash, but the Lantern is a key item in a lot of optional and even main areas moving forward, so it's honestly just best to pick it up as soon as you can anyways. <laughs> Mask shards and vessel fragments should be considered a constant priority when exploring. You'll find one of each in the green path. The area's mask shard is found in a sub-area on your map known as the Stone Sanctuary, located just beneath the bench below the Hunter NPC where you received the journal. If you're next to an area that looks like a cute little face, you're, you're in the right spot. If you picked up the Lumafly Lantern that I mentioned earlier, this shouldn't be any trouble at all. This also might be an opportune time for you to go on ahead and face No Eyes if you've acquired the Dream Nail. A blind spirit, fittingly named No Eyes, seems to like hanging back while her ghost minions do all the damage and the work. She teleports around like an asshole and the swarming ghosts can sometimes organize themselves in a way that forces you into uncomfortable positions, but for the most part she isn't too big a deal. Finish her off and then head to the top right screen transition, leading you to the shard. It's slightly recommended that you have the dash here. The extra mobility helps with the spike pits, but it isn't totally necessary. The green path vessel fragment you'll find near the entrance to the gardens, and although the entrance itself will be inaccessible at this point in the journey, you'll be able to come back through the same pathway later, so feel free to disregard this for now. Anyways, make your way through the platforming segment by a mix of dashing and downstriking on the heads of Durandus. Not Durandus, Durandus. Nope, yep, they're, uh, they're different. All the way on the other side of the platforming segment is a separate path upwards where you will need the Mantis Claw to access, which you will find near the Mantis Village. 
if you're in the green path right now, you aren't too far off from. So if you haven't found the claw yet, just make a note here for later and return to this part once you have it. Jump up and make your way to the right back to the beginning of the screen, and you'll see it right here on a little podium for you. Clear as day. There are two charms in total here in the green path, and although they aren't considered amazing for builds like Mark of Pride or Shaman Stone, each charm still has plenty of room to fit in their own little niche build. Starting from the bench in the middle of the map here, go straight downward until you reach the next screen. Immediately head right into the area with a bunch of thorns, and then head upward into another screen. Finally, make your way slightly up and then right, and you'll find a transition that looks like this on the outside. This is the room where you'll find the Thorns of Agony charm. You'll need to beat Hornet and receive the Mothwing Cloak first, because some of the platforming here requires you to dash over some obstacles. The second charm, Shape of Un, you won't be able to obtain until much later. As you journey through Hollow Nest, you'll likely find another item known as Ismus Tear that allows you to... I'm, you know what? I'm not going to spoil what it does. Find a key item with that name and then shoot yourself across the lake to reveal another sub-area, the Lake of Un, which I already discussed earlier. What you'll need to do from there should be pretty clear. Just follow the path downward and you'll find the charm. There are a total of four grubs here that I've marked on the map, and defeating a certain boss much later on will give you access to a grub icon that appears on the map and locates imprisoned grubs for you, but you probably aren't there yet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take the liberty of doing that for you. The next minute or so here will be a little light on narration because I'll just be rescuing grubs, so if you already know what to do here, just go ahead and skip on to the next point. The first and easiest grub to find in the green path is the one here that's just above Cornifer. The second grub you will find in the same area as the vessel fragment you found earlier. You probably saw it on your way across the acid. The third grub you'll find guarded by the moss knight in the upper section of the green path, not too far from where you faced Hornet. The fourth and final grub is found just below the entrance to the Hunter NPC. Cut the logs free and follow them downward until you find the grub directly to the right. <laughs> Lastly, for collectibles, there are three relics in total in the green path. Two journals and one seal. The journal can be found immediately upon exiting the stag station below the Hornet boss fight and breaking down this secret wall here to reveal a hidden dugout. Just be sure to kill the full leader before going down to collect it. The second journal can be found right above the entrance to Fog Canyon marked on your map here. There's also a Hallow Nest seal found on the corpse of this bug right here, but you'll need both the Moth Wing Cloak and the Monarch Wings to get to it, as the low ceiling prevents you from getting away with just a double jump or a dash. <laughs> There's a Whispering route you can activate coming back from the Queen's Gardens area by unlocking that shortcut I mentioned earlier that's blocked by the log. Once activated, the Essence will extend across the entire platforming area, but don't let that scare you too much, because chances are if you've made it to the Gardens, this platforming should be far easier for you than it was before. There's also a Lifeblood Cocoon you can find a little ways from where you freed the Grub from the Moss Knight. Head upwards from here, and you'll find the Lifeblood Cocoon. Since it's located so close to the Hornet fight, don't be afraid to use it if you feel like you'll need the extra health, because that's probably why it's there anyways. Of course, a lot of you probably already know this, but in preparation of Silk Song, I've decided it might be a good thing to start the series back up again, as I'm sure there's going to be a massive wave of newer players here pretty soon. 
And if you are just starting and you've managed to avoid spoilers for three years somehow, then uh, congratulations. That's actually kind of impressive. Let me know which area you'd like for me to cover next, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Rusty, and I will see you in the next episode, if there is one, but there probably will be, so let me know. Yeah, thanks. Okay, you can you can leave now. Video's uh video is over. Don't know why you're sitting here, there's gonna be nothing at the end. This this is not a bit. I'm just I'm not giving you anything, man. He's, why, are, why are you here? There's nothing. You think there's a fucking Silk Song release date at the end of this? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not giving you anything. There's nothing. There isn't shit at the end of this. Just leave.